Lesson 1, I will create conversion tables for length, weight, and capacity units. So a conversion table is when you are going from one unit of length or weight or capacity to the other. So for example, if I want to go from feet to inches, I could create what's called a conversion table to help me. Same thing with ounces and pounds, and the same thing with gallons and quarts or cups, etc. All right, so we're going to start today with our practice sheet. And our practice sheet goes from pounds to ounces. So first you're going to need to know a little bit of general information like how many pounds are equal to or how many ounces are in a pound. Well, you may know this already, but if you don't, there are 16 ounces in a pound. So if there are 16 ounces in one pound, how many ounces are in two pounds? Well, that would be 32. Well, how many would be in three pounds? Well, what is 16 times three? It'd be 48. Okay, we're going to pause the video here for just a minute. I'm going to let you fill out the rest of this. It is okay if you use a calculator. And if you don't have a calculator with you, we do have some calculators in the classroom. But instead of getting up and getting one of those, you're sitting at a device. Did you know that if you go to Google like this, and you type in a math problem, like let's say, for example, you typed in 16 times 4. Look at what happens. So I'm putting in 16, and for times, I'm using a capital, I'm just using an X, and I'm putting in 4, and look what happens when I press Enter. The answer comes up. So I can go right back to where I was, and I can type in 64. Let's try one more together, and then I'm going to let you do the rest of these by yourself. All right, so let's do 16 times 5. 80. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video, and I want you to continue to fill in the rest of these all by yourself. And then let's come back and compare. Okay, so let's compare answers. So I just want you to go through and check to make sure that you have the same thing as me. So just look and see if you have 96, 112, 128, 144, and 160. So what is the rule for converting pounds to ounces? How did we find all of these answers? We took the number of pounds and we did what? We multiplied times 16. So the rule for converting pounds to ounces is multiply by 16. Okay, let's take a look at yards and feet. Okay, do you know how many feet are in a yard? Well, there are three. So if there are three feet in one yard, how many feet are in two yards? Well, that would be six, right? Well, how many feet are in three yards? Well, that would be nine, right? I want you to complete the rest of this table and then come back. If you want to use the calculator, you may. Okay, so let's compare. I didn't need the calculator for this one because I figured out really quickly what the rule was. Did you figure out the, what the rule was? Well, I figured out that the rule was every time I had yards, all I was doing was multiplying by 3. And I know my 3's pretty well. So the rule is multiply by 3. Double check to make sure that all of your feet and yards match mine. All right, now let's take a look at feet to inches. How many inches are in a foot? Well, how many inches are on a ruler? Because a ruler is one foot. Well, that would be 12. So how many inches are in two feet? 24. Well, how many inches are in three feet? 36. And four? 48. Okay, I want you to finish the rest of this chart, go ahead and pause the video and then we'll come back and check together. Okay, so let's compare. So just go through my list and make sure that you have the same as I did. We stopped right here at, at 5 feet. So 5 feet has 60 inches and then we had 72, 84, 96, 108, and 120. Did you figure out the rule for converting feet to inches? What were we doing every time? We were taking the feet and we were multiplying by what? Every time we would multiply by 12. So what we've created here are three conversion tables. 
We have a conversion table here for feet and inches. And then we did a conversion table for yards and feet. And we also did a conversion table for pounds and ounces. All of these are conversion tables. And this is what we're going to be using today in our problem set to be able to answer some questions. So let's go ahead and look at our problem set. And let's get started today. I'm going to go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger so that we can see a little bit better. Oh, that didn't help. All right, so we're going to use the RDW process, which means we're going to read, we're going to draw, and we're going to write. So Evan put a two pound weight on one side of the scale. How many one ounce weights will he need to put on the other side of the scale to make them equal? So let's think about that for a minute. Okay, so I'm thinking that I may use a tape diagram to help model me, to help me model this for just a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my diagram here. And I'm thinking, well, I know that there is one ounce in each weight, because it says how many one ounce weights. And I know that I'm trying to get to two pounds. So this is the abbreviation for pounds. What I want to know is how many of these ounces are in two pounds. Well, I know that one pound equals 16 ounces. So if I had two pounds, I can look at my conversion chart. How many ounces are in two pounds? Well, that would be 32 ounces. So how many one ounce weights will he need to put on the other th side of the scale to make them equal? So Evan will need 32 one ounce weights. Okay. All right, let's look at number two. Julius put a three pound weight on one side of the scale. Abel put 35 one ounce weights on the other side. How many more one ounce weights does Abel need to balance the scale? All right, so we're doing a comparison problem here. We're comparing Julius to Abel. So let's go ahead and it sounds like Abel has less because Abel's going to have to add more to be able to balance the scale. So I'm going to make Abel a little bit smaller here. All right, so this is Julius and this is Abel. So Julius has three pounds of weight. And Abel has 35 ounces. So three pounds, how many ounces would that be equal to? Could you look at your conversion table and tell? Well, according to your conversion table, three pounds is equal to 48 ounces. And Abel has 35 ounces. So we're trying to figure out how much more does Abel need to add so that they are equal? That's how a scale would be balanced if they're equal. So what would I do to these two numbers to find out what this missing part is? Well, I hope you said subtract. So I would take 48 ounces and I would subtract 35 ounces. And that would give me 13 ounces. So how many more one ounce weights does Abel need to balance the scale? Abel needs 13 more one ounce weights. Okay, let's look at number three. Miss Upton's baby weighs five pounds and four ounces. How many total ounces does the baby weigh? All right, so our total here is five pounds, four ounces. And we're trying to figure out how many ounces this is. Well, we know that one pound equals 16 ounces. So if I want to know how many ounces are in five pounds, I can look at my conversion table, right? You can go back to your conversion table and figure out how many ounces are in five pounds. When you figure it out, come back. Okay, hopefully you found that five pounds has 80 ounces. So now we have to go back and remember that her baby also weighed four ounces. So we've got that 80 ounces, plus we're gonna add four ounces, and that's a total of 80 
four ounces. So the baby weighed, or weighs, I guess, the baby weighs 84 ounces. All right, let's take a look at number four. Complete the following conversion tables and write the rule under each table. So we've already done the first four of these in our first conversion table that we did as a practice sheet. I want you to go back to that practice sheet and I want you to figure out the first four. And then I want you to use the rule to figure out number 17 and then let's come back. Okay, so hopefully you went back and found your practice sheet. And how did you figure out number 17? Well, I took 17 times 16 using my calculator and that gave me 204. And the rule is still to go from pounds to ounces is to multiply by 16. All right, let's go ahead and do B and C. I want you to pause the video and do them just like you did A. Okay, so for these two conversion tables, you should have been able to complete them. And for the last one, I also figured out another trick that I could do besides multiplying by 12. Well, if this is 5 and this is 10, then if I add these two together, I got 15. And I did the same thing over here. If this is 12 and this is 10, for 14 yards, I could add those two together. Did you figure out that trick too? All right, let's look at number five. We're going to solve. Three feet and one inch equals how many inches? Okay, let's take a look at number five. So we're going to be doing a little bit of conversion. We can use our conversion tables as much as possible. So like if you can see at number five, we're going from feet to inches. So if we go back to our very first conversion table that we did together, let's take a look at this one. It says three feet is equal to how many inches? 36. So we can use that. So let's go back to where we were. And if we know that three feet is 36 inches, okay, so let's write that right here. So let's just go ahead and say this is 36 inches. And then we have one more inch to add to that. So all together that would be 30 seven inches. All right, now we have 11 feet, 10 inches. So let's go back to that conversion table. We may be able to go back to that last conversion table that we did here. All right, well, we've got 10 feet and we've got one foot. So if we're trying to get 11 feet, what could we do with this 10 and this one? Well, we could add them together, right? We could take 11 times 12. Or, or we could say, well, 10 is 120 and 1 is 12, so we could add those together. Well, I know 120 plus 10 is 130 plus 2 more is 132. So 11 feet is 132 inches, and now I'll have to do is add 10 more. That would be 142 inches. All right, so now we've got 5 yards and 1 foot. Well, I know that there are how many feet in a yard? Let's look back. There are three feet and one yard. Well, since three is a pretty small number, we could probably multiply by three pretty easily. What is five times three? Well, that's 15, right? So 15 yards is equal to 15 feet. And then I just add the one foot and that gives me 16 feet. Okay, same thing with 12. I can do 12 times three pretty easily. 12 times 3 is 36, and then I take that 36, and I add it to 2, and that gives me 38 feet. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about pounds and ounces. So let's go back to our last chart here where we have pounds and ounces. Now we're trying to get 17 pounds. Do you see a way that we could do that? We could take 17 times 16, right? But do you see a faster way? Well, if I'm trying to get 27 and I have 17 and I have 10, what could I do to these two numbers? I could add them, right? And I can add them right here. So let's go ahead and add these and see what we get. So I get 4, 6, and 3. So 27 pounds is 364 ounces. So I've got 364 ounces plus 10 ounces. So what would that total be? 374 ounces. I want you to try to do F, G, 
and H by yourself. So let's go ahead and pause the video and see what you can do all by yourself. Remember to refer to your conversion tables. They can help you. Okay, well, hopefully you paused the video and tried to do this by yourself. Well, how'd you do? They were pretty tricky, right? Let's take a look at F. So we had 18 yards. So the first thing I did was I went back to my last conversion table, and I looked right here, and I had 14 and 4. So together that equals 18. So I added 12 and 42 together, and that gave me 54. So that's where I got the 54, and then I just added the 9, and that gave me 63. All right, so let's look at G. This one was a little bit tricky, too. I had to go back and look at my conversion table. So I had 14 pounds. So I went back, and the first thing I noticed is I didn't have 14. So I had a couple of options here. I got to look at it, and I thought, well, I could take 17 and subtract 3 because 17 minus 3 is 14. So I could take 204 minus 48, or I could take 7 times 2. And I thought, well, I would, could multiply faster than I could subtract. So I went ahead and went with 112 times 2, which would give me 14 pounds. So 14 pounds was actually 224 ounces. And I took that 224 ounces and added 5, and that gave me 229. Now H was the trickiest of all, because if you'll notice, you're going from yards and feet, which was pretty easy because 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 gave me 17 feet. But they really try to trick you because, look, it doesn't say feet, it says inches. So you had to figure out how many inches were in 17 feet. So I went back here, and I saw 15, and I saw 2. So I added these together, 180 plus 24, which gave me 200. Four. So this actually should say 204. Okay, so 17 feet has 204 inches. Those last three are pretty tricky. I hope that you tried to do them by yourself, though. It's okay if you couldn't get them all or if you didn't do it correctly. But if you don't try to do it by yourself, you don't learn near as much. All right, so we've got a little bit left here. Answer true or false for the following statements. If the statement is false change the right side of the comparison to make it true. So first of all, we have to remember how many grams are in a kilogram. Well, there are a thousand, right? So if I have two kilograms, this is equal to 2,000 grams. Is 2,000 grams greater than 2,600 grams? No, so this will be false. So I have to change this to make it true. So it says to change the right side. So this is the right side. So if I want to make this less, what if I change this from 2,600 to 1,600? I could have changed it to anything as long as it was less than 2,000. All right, so we've got 12 feet is less than 140 inches. So let's go back to our conversion table and see how many inches are in 12 feet. All right, so here's 10. I think we may have done that this already, but anyway. Here's 10, and here's 2. So if I add these two together, what's 120 plus 24? That's 144, right? So this would be 144 inches. Is that less than 140 inches? No, so this would be false. So I have to change this so that it is true. Well, if this is going to be greater than 144, what if I change it to 145? Doesn't matter what I change it to as long as it's greater than 144. All right, so let's take a look at C. How many meters are in a kilometer? A thousand, right? So what's 10 times a thousand? 10,000. So is 10,000 kilometers equal to 10,000 meters? Yes. So this will be true. All right, so today was all about using conversion tables. And you noticed how we use the conversion tables to answer many of these questions. We could have just used a calculator to solve them, but I found that it was actually kind of faster just to go back and look at that conversion table to solve a lot of these problems.